Welcome back to another tutorial of QGIS in the JS Board Academy. In this short video, I'm gonna talk about georeferencing. If you are excited, let's get started. First of all, for this tutorial, we need some vector data. Uh, I want to use our plugin that we have already developed in, in our PyQGIS tutorial, but uh, if you don't have this plugin, don't worry about this, just add some vector data. Just this is because I will load it with the specific naming and symbology, so definitely I will use it. Okay, and also maybe I can add what is this? I can add my OpenStreetMap. It's nice. So I will add it here. Uh, the first step always I'm telling to my colleagues or students, the first thing which is really, really important in the digitizing, uh, maybe the scale of the image or the, the, the study area, it's really big. And so first it, digitizing, for example, this area, it's a bit difficult and complicated. You need a lot of control points for that. But I'm always telling them, ask a customer, ask your anyone that giving you this image for georeferencing, just ask them, where is the study area? For example, according to my image, just I wanna georeference this part. For example, this part is the most important part for me. Okay, always try to make a square triangle, for example, like make it a square or make, a, for example, something like this triangle or some for example like this for example in this area i want to make it like this for example you can see that i have a four points and so something like this and always if you can put one object or not point is not the correct things one object inside the map so it will be really good for most of the official maps so it is uh, so just if you should shift it and scale it. So if you take care of these parameters, it is more than enough. Okay, just we will start it and I will explain it more during the during our georeferencing. Just go to the layer, georeferencer. Um, where is it? Just let me, yeah, it's here. And where is my QGIS file? Okay, just. Then I will just select my image. I will click on my image. And this image is uh, Hirschladen municipality, which is real near to the Stuttgart. So you can take everywhere that you want, plus some vector data. Okay, as I have already told you, just select some objects. So for me, the right now, uh, the scale and the shift of the map is very important because I want to fit to frame of this object. So we will start it. Again, you can see that because I got this image from OpenStreet, uh, sorry, not OpenStreetMap, from the Google Map. So yeah, you see that it doesn't have a good, and maybe I can activate the snapping tool. Okay. Oh, sorry, it is wrong. So it is a good that. So I will select on this button. So delete the point. So I will edit again. So this point, this point, this point. Okay. Then this point from the map, this point. Yeah. So you can see that it is not the order photo. Again, the quality of the map, it's a really, really, really important thing. So and always, if you are georeferencing the map, if you want to say that, okay, what is the accuracy of my, so how can I handle these residuals? The only thing that I can tell you, just ask about the pixel size. So for example, if the pixel size are 10 meters, so if your residuals in the range of three meters, perfect, that's fine. Three meters, four meters, it's fine. Then again from the map, which buildings I want to digitalize this one. Then, okay. Uh, 
uh, sorry i forgot to add it there and after that also this point from map oh i i think i can okay and also you see that because yes the quality of the image always is the one of the most important factor so because you are giving the rotation and uh, uh, not rotation for the official maps scale and shift so because the shape of the buildings are really important for me so i will give as much as possible the exact shape of the building again i have another important building there so i will give again the exact from the from the map so where is it uh, why well, i couldn't find it yeah, it's here so we can do it a little bit fast for example right now i don't zoom a lot but but in your project you should do you should you should try to make it as better as possible till now, right now we have a lot of uh, auto uh, for example auto detections objects so you can also work on them so and then also we will talk about them in our definitely next tutorials this building it's done you see that this is i i, I want to create one somehow a square so i don't want to put a lot of effort just i want to finish it fast so you can so we want to see the result and i want to talking about the results and finally the last point Mm -hmm. so after that you should take a look at the residuals and for example this one is the nine you see that in the y direction it is not a good number so you should select it remove it and then continue it again but i will keep it and just i want i want to run it because i want to talking about some more important things so I will select a linear. So uh, which one you want to select it? And I have already have a good article about this. You can see it. So in the linear, when you are when you want to digitize an official map from the government, from the municipality, so you don't have you don't need any rotation because everything is there. This is in the north side, so you can see it. It is in the north side, so you don't. So you don't want the scale is important and shift so linear always is enough for the official maps let me go there and also we have the polynomial one and helmert it's it's difficult if you so if your image it is not in the north side or if your map, uh, which it doesn't have any coordinate, it is it is not in the north side, so you need also to add also the rotation. Projective also is the same, but these polynomials, sp line, so these are really good when you have x, y, and z coordinate. So when you you have the altitude, okay, but please don't use it for the two D maps. So you are just giving them more. Uh, points without nothing for the linear so just search it maybe it has i think not maybe uh, i think it has a two parameter so you need minimum two points but as i have already told you tr try to ask what is the aim of your georeferencing it is really important if the aim of georeferencing to find out these buildings or this road so you should give more points according to for example for this road again i will make a triangle and or sorry the square or rectangle or some regular points with for example five sides and as i start with putting the points here and connecting the intersections are important and so on okay 
Great. So save the uh, ground control points. So I don't need it. So let me just check. So I have already. Oh yeah. Okay. Now it's done. The setting is done, and now we can just go and take a look at the result. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think I think it looks good, and I think now it looks somehow good. You can see that all the buildings which are inside this area has a really good fitting. You can see everything is really good fitted to the image plus the vector data. But as I go to the left right up or left up of the image you can see the effect of scaling and the shifting so if i'm turning on and off you can see that these buildings has a little shift you can see the result yes and this is the this is the very important things that you should always make a regular shape around your study area don't forget to ask these questions from your customer or from uh, anyone give you this georeferencing so i think we have already talked about everything so if you have any questions don't forget to comment it in the comment section below and like all other video thanks a lot for your time See you all in the next video. Bye.